yeah, so today we are going to deal with this pipeline issues, with the education data, science, uh, online science classroom data, right? Um, so the goals in this chapter is really um, this around um, to learn about key steps in data preparation, processing, and wrangling using mostly tidyverse. It's a set of packages. I think Mark covered uh, some of the functions last week. Um, and as you probably know, this data cleaning is something that data, data scientists spend most of the time. I think in this pie chat, it says, yeah, 79% if you combine both the cleaning and collecting data. And that sounds just right, like 80% of the time, <laughs> you will just have, want to have your data in the shape that you can analyze and visualize and it takes up a lot of time. And I just put the visual, uh, this is from the artful data science book. Um, I think many, many of you are familiar, but uh, we import data and we tidy up you know, with reshape and whatnot. Wrangling is part of that to make your data or data frame in the way that R can analyze. And you have to transform uh, your data sometimes. In this example, we will transfer, transform the time data. The, it, it, originally it's minutes, but we'll convert into hours and standardize it. And that's one uh, type of transformation. Um, yeah, and you visualize visualize your data typically with ggplot, um, and then you model. In this example, we'll do linear uh, regression, so LM. Um, by the way, is this recorded? Do I need to record? Oh, it's recorded. Okay. Um, okay. Um, yeah, and you communicate. So communicate part today. We will output uh, regression tables and. Uh, uh, the correlation matrix in Word, which uh, I did not know that APA function, so that I thought was very cool. All right, any questions so far? So far, so good. All right. Okay, so let's just look at what we are trying to do with this data set and then what are the data sources. So basically I took away the main thing, main exploration we are doing is what explains or what correlates ID with students' final grade in online science courses, right? And then on the left side of this table, um, I listed some of the variables. So the obviously final grades are the dependent variable that we want to explain, that's the outcome. But we have, and that comes from the course data, data frame. Um, but also we have information about the subjects. Uh, there are five courses or the subjects. I listed them there. Um, it's uh, alphabetically ordered. And then when, when we put the subject in the linear regression, the animal, animal physiology, the first one that you see, oh, sorry, that's listed as the reference category, but that's a categorical variable. Then we have motivation measures from pre-student survey, interest and per perceived competence and utility value. Um, and we'll take a look at correlations among those three measures or dimensions. Then we have a uh, log trace or process data, which is uh, already aggregated it, um, in this data set. Uh, it's the number of minutes. Uh, that students spend on the course. And uh, that comes from course underscore minutes data frame. And then the book talked about this discussion board, but that's not uh, part of uh, what we look at uh, today. All right. So here's a list of things that's gonna happen. I felt this is a lot, um, but I think um, I try to um, highlight some of the most important one in the bigger uh, font. So, um, you know, we'll import view data. I wanna introduce you to this uh, DEF summary function from summary tools package, which is very cool. You can get the descriptives and then little visuals very quickly. 
for all of the variables or the columns in a data frame. So you get to know your data a little bit, then you, you will do processing, that's number two. And there are a couple of different functions in blue. These are mostly, if I did not uh, specify in the purple and curly brackets, that's, uh, that's mostly tidyverse uh, set of packages. Um, and uh, we'll merge some of these three data frames into a new data frame called D D A DAT, DAT, right? And then we're using the student ID and course ID as keys. Um, then we will just take the distinct student cases for student and course combination because some students took multiple courses and we would like to you know, count that as separate cases. Uh, and then lastly, the an analysis part uh, will create scatter plot and then correlation matrix and then do some regressions. <laughs> this is quite a lot, but I thought I would stop here and then I just want to hear if you had a chance to read the chapter or even like practice it. Is there any of these that were tricky or not clear and want to spend some time? I'm looking at chat. Okay, I, I don't know, uh, is this, okay, I'm, I'm closing the chat. Okay, so no, no reaction, then uh, I'm gonna uh, uh, march through and then we'll see how, how far we can go. Um, but I would like to introduce how I wrote the scripts files and then even if we can't cover everything, Hopefully, maybe you can do it on your own time. And then maybe if, if we have some questions about certain function or whatnot, maybe we can continue conversation through Slack. Uh, but just um, before launching into the script file, I thought I would highlight maybe two function in this slide. Yeah, so people longer. Um, so this is a very useful function from the tidyverse um, packages. Maybe it's a bit deployer, yeah, I don't remember, but it has become so much easier, um, clearer. It used to be gather and then spread, but I think this, this field longer is more intuitive and easy to understand. So what we are trying to do with this function is to make your um, data frame, which comes in this wide format that you can you see on the top part of the slide um, into long format. So what's happening is we like to treat this question one through 10 from the free survey as values of this new uh, variable called question. And you can name that uh, column header or the variable name, uh, uh, whatever you like, but let's say question, right? So, so the wide columns comes as a values and then it becomes, it becomes longer uh, data frame, right? And so for each student, um, for each course, there are 10 uh, rows because there are 10 questions and that repeats, uh, so it becomes a longer format. And so we have the question variable and then response, that's where this value, uh, whatever the students, uh, uh, selected for that particular survey question goes. Um, yeah, so this is useful. And then there is a reverse of this uh, pivot wider, which is to make long form to wide form. And that happens in, the, in this walkthrough too. Is this clear? <laughs> okay, good. And then the other one I thought is uh, very key and then, you know, uh, you use all the time is this join functions. And then I think one to remember is left join. And I don't think you need to worry about the other ones, but here is a nice visual um, to see if you need to use other joins. But today uh, I'm gonna talk about left join. And then the key is just to have your main uh, data frame 
in the example, it will be the course data. Different. What's that? Sorry, um, did somebody have a question or something? Okay, I'm gonna go through. Um, yeah, so the most important thing is the base, the, the one that you want to keep, uh, put it in A, so the leftmost, and then the ones that you want to add variables, for example, you know, the pre-survey, and then the minutes spent, uh, you will put as B, the second one. And uh, you are, you're keeping all of the cases from A, and then we'll bring in the third variable X3 from the second data frame. And if there is nothing for a particular person like C, then an A will be inserted. So that's left join. It's just merging two uh, data frames. This is very useful. All right, so I will stop here and then I'll uh, go to the, let's see. Um, I'm gonna bring up uh, R, let's see, is this the one? Yes. Um, and I apologize, do you see my screen okay? This is my RStudio interface. All right. Yeah, and then the one that I posted on uh, Slack is the latest. I had some difficulty um, recommitting committing the newer version. I ha still have, I'm learning how to do the merge when the branch is ahead of me or when I'm ahead of the brand, main branch and then I'm still learning that that particular piece of uh, information about Git. So um, I'm using the one that I posted on Slack, but it's mostly the same. So uh, I don't think it will be a much of a difference. Um, so does everyone have this open? I hope you are opening this. Um, do you have any question how to open or um, where to get started. Is everybody okay? Okay, so what I put here is some useful shortcuts. Um, I don't know if these are covered, but um, so when you run, uh, the easiest thing to do is to put your cursor um, uh, on the line that you wanna run. And what I do, I use Mac, so I use the command and return or enter. And then on Mac, it's control and enter. Um, and that will go, uh, I, I don't have to do the install packages, but for example, library, I'm doing auto, sorry, the command return. And then it goes through one line by line pretty quickly. And then I can see I loaded packages in console. Is that clear to you? So that's a nice, uh, shortcut so that you don't have to do like select and run, for example. That's uh, that's a way, but um, it's nice that you have a control and then you can go down as you do command return. And I put some other ones like um, today, I mostly uh, copy and paste from the book um, these codes. So maybe you didn't have to type very much, but if you are uh, writing, actual codes, this assignment sign you use all the time. So it may be useful to know the shortcut. I don't, I haven't memorized it. Um, and then also the type sign, um, there's a Mac version and then the window version. All right, so I'm hoping that you installed most of the packages. Maybe you don't have the summary tools. So you might wanna install that. Um, and then what I mentioned on Slack is that maybe you, you guys have already done in earlier chapters, but for some reason I couldn't uh, uh, install the regular data ed package. So I installed the uh, development version by running this uh, particular line of code. And that took me to up update some of the other um, packages and that took time. So um, if you have to do that, um, yeah, be aware. Is it okay? So far, so good. Okay. 
it's kind of weird <laughs> that I don't hear anybody's voice. But anyhow, so let's yeah, import data from the data ed um, package. So please run these, you know, load the library. This is almost analogous to clicking, you know, Word or Excel to call on, you know, I want to use these packages or software. So I'm calling on all of these. Um, so nice thing about this walkthrough is that you're not importing data from Excel or CSV. It comes from the package. So data it, right? And this, um, how do you say the double columns? Uh, the, the earlier part is the package name. Um, and pre-survey, I think this is, usually it's a function, but it may be just the uh, data frame. So if you run this, I just did command return. Um, and then you can do, so sometimes I come down to the console and then I do pre-survey. Then I can see what, what it is, how it looks like that data frame, right? Just the first 10 rows. And you can do the same for these other data frames. So data, course data, and then course minutes. Um, this is basically, you know, I think you guys probably covered assignment is just giving a name. You don't have to say pre-survey if you want it like DF1 or, you know, this is something that you can specify what, whatever the name that you want to give. Okay, so we are loading three data frames and then there are different ways to look at data. Um, so, uh, so I just did the pre-survey, which is to just to, because this data frame is uh, formatted in Tibble, a particular format that Ty Weavers advocates, it comes nicely. You can see, you know, first couple of, of columns and then what format it is in, right? So the first two are string or character variables. The other ones are numbers, so double is signifies those are the numbers. Um, but you can also do head and then column and put the data frame name. So that's another function. I think it's from the base R. This shows very similar information, uh, just first six rows. And the other one, uh, glimpse, line 42 gives you a different view. This one is easy to see uh, the variables in your data frame. So all the 12 variables are listed in rows and you kind of see how the values come in the first couple of cases. Um, yeah, so that's, uh, I think those are covered in the book. But the one that I want to um, introduce is this DF summary function. And then uh, you put one of the uh, data frame pre-survey, for example. And then I'm using this view outside of this so that when you run this code, the results will come in this viewer tab on the right side. So I already run it, so you see it. But if you run this, uh, line 45, then you get this nice table of summary of your data frame. And I really like this because it gives you, you know, variable name, the, how the values look like, and then frequency, and, you know, so uh, username, there are many, like close to 900 of them. So um, it, it will just the summary, summary, but you kind of get a graph, you know, how the shape of the distribution might look like and uh, missing data. So this is, uh, the chapter doesn't talk about very much, but I think when you do the data analysis, you have to make a decision about what to do with missing this. Yeah, so this is really nice overall summary and it gives you all of the information, all the columns or the variables in the, in, in the data frame that you plug in. So if you would like, try this and then look at some other ones now. Uh, so we have course data, and then course minutes. All you needed to do is to, I'll just copy and then I'll do it here, down here, but you can just change it to, what's the name? Um, 
course data. And then uh, the R Studio is pretty uh, clever. So it gives you, you know, what's the likely uh, object might be, and if it's the right one, it's it's nice to just click it so that you don't make mistake in the spelling. So if you do that, we get ones for from the course data. Um, and as you do this, you kind of see what sort of things are in your data, what are the common ones. So the common ones are these, um, I think these are some, some part of this is the course ID. And then um, this is the, oh, I forget. I feel like this is the username and we'll, we'll rename it. Any questions? Am I doing okay? That's really cool. great. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't able to get the summary tools installed, so it's really cool to see what's going on here. Yeah. And um, you, you know, summary tool, uh, you can have this as RMD, um, RMD file and then have it, you know, in the HTML format as well. But I think this is a really handy uh, function. All right. Okay, so then let's process pre-survey. Uh, one of the things that they're doing is renaming the variable. So if you go back, uh, just do, uh, yeah. Mm, what's the good way? Uh, pre-survey. It has a long, maybe I'm, sorry. I just wanna show you the variable names. So these are long uh, names starting with Q1 main cell, whatever. So they're renaming it as most simple question one through question 10. So that's what this uh, particular set of codes are doing. Um, one thing to notice is that if you don't have, if you don't start with this assignment sign, and let's say you don't have this, and then just do this, then changes, change will happen, but they are, uh, they're just in that instance, it's not recorded in your data frame called pre-survey. So having this first line starting with data frame and an assignment will make sure that the changes that you are making, this renaming will stay or saved in your data frame. So that's the yeah data frame name, I want to save it. And then the second one, you are calling data frame again, because that's the one that you, that you are using to apply this rename function to. So it's, it looks redundant, but as you get used to it, um, I think you will know what's going on. Um, at the end, so there's pipe sign, which is to say, you know, we are carrying over, we're gonna do something else uh, after this renaming. And so the second thing that's what's doing is this, what's doing is that uh, mutate at, uh, this mutate, and the, there's a family of mutate functions, but this is mutate is create, either create new variables or uh, overwrite or replace something that are already existing. So in this case, uh, it's a little bit advanced way of doing things, but I am uh, mutating these 10 new variables that I named, renamed, as numeric. But when I looked at, even if without these lines of codes, they are already numeric. So they, they are a little bit redundant, but I think it's a, it's a nice way to show what the mutate at can do. So I'm gonna run this whole thing, uh, command return, and it will go all the way down and it just run it. <clears throat> Um, so if I do pre-survey to see what happened, I just typed under the console, pre-survey. Now I can see these uh, variable names are shorter as I renamed, and these are all uh, numeric double. All right. Um, I just mentioned uh, if I were doing it, I might already put some suffix to the question name and then there's a way um, that can also be useful to uh, 
make some categories, right? Some, you know, question one is interest and then question two is the second dimension. Um, and then the piece, you know, third question may be uh, perceived com uh, competence. Um, and by doing, putting some suffix will help you do some um, data preparation easier, but it's not covered. So it's just for your information. Like there's an ending with to specify if it end with something dot I, I wanna do X. And so that kind of stuff can be done. All right, so far so good. So we just renamed. Um, and then we are practicing mute, what, how mutate work. So there's this little example. So this is this lines of code is creating a new data frame called DF. And then there are just two um, columns. Um, if you can see it's down below here, but we're creating two columns. And then in the first row, there's five. So five male and then five female. And the practice is to create this new variable by using mutate. So the total uh, underscore students is the new variable. And then you just specify equals to male plus female. So that's how you write. And then it will create a new variable. And if you do this, you notice I'm just doing DF to specify this is the data frame that I want to use that I just created above there. I'm applying mutate. Um, then it, it will happen, but it will happen just in here. And if I call up on DF and see, it doesn't, so this total students will not come up. So if you want to save or keep this new variable in your data frame, DF, you have to have this assignment initially. So if you run the line 88 and then check, then you will have this, your new variable kept in the data frame. So I just want to mention that. So far, so good. <laughs> All right, so then I, I think this reverse score function, this is what is called user specified function. This is an advanced content, I think. It's nice to, so just to get a feel for it, uh, but there's already a existing package and function that does the same thing. So don't worry if you can't write this, but this is one of the powerful things about R that you can create your own function so that if you specify something and you want to do over and over, um, you can make R to do that, right? You don't have to, write many, many lines of codes and just change uh, little things. So user specified function is very useful and powerful, but I confess I, I don't know too much about it or if, especially when we are using tidyverse, it conflicts with some of the, it makes it a little bit complex. So I'm still struggling to learn, but it's nice to see this example. So what's going on here is we are creating new function called re reverse underscore scale. Um, and then we are doing the function and question is something that we will later on provide input into. So this is something that you can, you can specify yourself. You can say object or, you know, you can, you can name it whatever. And what's, so underneath what's going on is case when that's a function. So if the question is one, make it five, right? If the question is two, so this is a value, it's the response. It's not the question number, it's the response uh, value in the data set. If it's a two, make it a four, right? So this is reverse scoring. Um, and the book talked about how you have to, three doesn't change, but it's nice to fully spell out all of the possibilities. And then last one, I think uh, this is returning NA if something unexpected uh, happened. So that's a little special case. Um, and then, so we are specifying X and then um, return X. So this will print the X, print X. 
and this is the end of that function. So this is the whole thing. This is the how you define your new function. So I'm going to run this. Um, and then let's see how it works. So your new function is called reverse underscore scale, and it takes some object. So that's the question that we named. So the quest for the, for the question part in this parenthesis, you put uh, what you want to uh, apply reverse uh, scaling function to. Um, this is the base uh, way of writing it. So I'm saying from the pre-survey um, data frame, I wanna take question four. So that's the column. And then use the dollar sign to demarcate the data frame and then the column in the, in the data frame. So please apply reverse scale in the pre-survey, uh, question four. So if you run this, and then it will return the whole thing. Uh, just to check what, how, whether it did the reverse scoring, you can print the original one. So the original one is just a, a pre-survey question four, except uh, you know, uh, not using the reverse scale. Um, so then in this console, I can see the first one was one, and then the reverse scale applied was five. So it seems to be working, right? So the second one, four, um, and then two. Yeah, that's working. And it's just rough. So you can check uh, whether this fun your, your function worked in the way you expect it. And now you can apply not just this to the question four, but also question seven. And uh, in this case, you want to keep it. You want to overwrite and then keep keep the changes. So you make the assignment and then code on the data frame with the pipe sign and mutate and then apply this uh, your uh, reverse scale function. Um, you can name it in a different, uh, as a different uh, column or different variable. For example, it's reverse, uh, reverse scored. So I will put R for example. So then you are not overwriting, but you are creating a new variable called a uh, question for R. And you are keeping question for the original one as original. So that's a nice thing about mutate. You can overwrite by using the same variable name, or you can um, give a new name so that you can add a new column um, as a new variable. So you can compare uh, as a column of vectors. How are we doing? Is this going okay? <laughs> We're gonna have a water. Thanks for mentioning uh, the name change there. I was worrying myself about losing track of um, yeah which version I, I was I was dealing with or whether I had reversed it twice and was back to right to right know. yeah so it may be good to keep you know create a new one as R and then keeping the one the original. Um, can people say a little more about the last couple comments? In the chat, I'd like to hear more about oh. transmute and then. All right, so what? I haven't checked. Can somebody? Uh... Right, so so mutate and transmute are our um, brother and sister functions, right? They, they do very similar things. Um, mutate is when you are creating a new variable and keeping everything else. Um, transmute is like doing a mutate with a select on the newly created variable. So you're getting rid of everything originally in that data frame, um, but you're keeping the, the created newly created variables for transmute. Yeah. So, so in, I, this, in this case, oh, we'd, sorry. We'd, sorry, we'd get Q4 and Q7 left. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing as like that example above when you're adding the male and the female students to total, you would, with the transmute, you would only keep the total students and it would drop the other, the male and the female column. So if you change this? Yeah. Is that the right column? 
Um, oops, maybe I, I miss. It's transmute, uh, not mutate. Oh, transmute. You, is it? Uh, e. E, sorry, okay. Oh, all right, no, I miss, okay. Yeah, so you just get the newly created one and then the ones feeding into that are dropped. Thank you. And, and like, to be clear, like I added another column that was like male, female, other of, you know, male five, female five, other five. And I, but I kept the same equation of total students equals male plus female and it got rid of the other one. So it's literally just keeping total students and getting rid of any other column, whether it was used in the calculation or not. You see. Oh, okay. So you have to be really careful with, <laughs> with transmute. Okay. Yeah. I haven't used that one before. Okay, great, cool. Any, anything else so far? <laughs> All right, so then let's just so Go ahead. You, you mentioned here the psych package with reverse code. Mm -hmm. um, uh, can you like give us a quick uh, talk through of that? Because um, I had not, I, mm -hmm. I mentioned that it's not tidyverse friendly, but like what what's the best way to? Oh, I see. Is there a no, quick I, example for that, or or? I think that I will. Mess up. I will play around. I feel like uh, site package prefers wide format, um, but um, and I just know it exists in that package. And if you want to do like you know the Coleman's Alpha and then some psychometric stuff, it's it's a good package. But I haven't really used it, so I can't really um, talk about. But I will add uh, maybe in my newer version of the codes, I will add how. How, how to use it with this data set. Thanks. Yeah, all right. So then, uh, so here is a pivot longer. So now we are going to make the pre-survey into long form. Currently it's a wide form. Um, oh, we didn't do view, but if you do view and then pre-survey, maybe you know this. And then by the way, view is capital then it will open up a new tab. And then this is more familiar spreadsheet way of looking at it, right? So it's the pre-survey data frame. And then um, now, so each student is one row. I mean, the student and then course combination is one row. And we have 10 questions, so going wide. So we are gonna make it to long format. Um, Ooh, ah, uh, so it, it, it's a long, okay, so, and then, okay, I remember this. We are naming this uh, new uh, long format data frame as measure mean, because later on, we will create average uh, of the scores for these three um, measures of motivation. Uh, so we're naming the new data frame as measure mean, um, but we're using pre-survey as the data frame. And then we apply this. People longer, I'm applying to, you know, question one to 10. Please give me uh, the names from the variable header to question and then values to response. That's the second uh, variable that we will be creating. So let's run this. Um, and then just take a look. So now we have two columns, new columns, and then it's all long format. Okay. And the purpose of doing this is to create a um, uh, code measure to this. Oh, okay. So in addition to <laughs> these two columns, now we are adding one more column after response, which is called measure. And then let's say, you know, question one and two belongs to this dimension or this measure, three and four and that measure and so forth. So that's what's happening in this set of um, codes. So we're saying if the question is one through one, four, five, eight, and 10, give it an int, that's the interest measure and these three items, 
uh, UV, um, it's the value, utility value, and these two items are PC, uh, perceived com competence. So let's run this. Um, I mean, you can just, sometimes you can just type it here and then see. So now we have a new column, a new, yeah, new column or variable, and it's a character variable. And then we have these uh, labels to denote three measures. All right. Um, Okay, I, it's hard to keep track of uh, chat, but if there's something that I need to respond, please uh, chime in and let me know. <laughs> All right, so then uh, we're gonna get mean scores for this, each of this dimension or the measure, right? Uh, across these 912 students who responded to the survey. Um, so to do that, we are using this group by because we would like to have uh, three average numbers, right? The mean response numbers. So uh, please give me, so let's just segment this data frame by this variable measure, which has three categories and then summarize. So I wanna get um, average, of this response, that's the these these numbers, right? But um, averaged for each of the category in UV PC, and yeah, uh, NARM. I think this is to remove NAs from the calculation of means. Um, yeah, this is key. You have to have this, otherwise it will not return the average score. And then the second variable that we are creating is this percent NA. So how many uh, responses are missing? Okay, so let's run this. And let's take a look, measure mean. Um, and now it's a summary statistics, right? So we have for them, you know, because we did the group by, we now have int PC and UV as rows, and then new summary statistics that's the average score um, within those uh, items item, um, across these students, right? Um, and then the percent met missing um, is calculated as well. It's actually a proportion. Any questions? So to do this calculation, um, it's nice to have the data in the longer format because we can take the uh, column header uh, information as values of a variable, like question one, two, three, four, five, that, can, that becomes the value. And then you can create this new variable measure for each of the question. And it will become uh, clearer as you work when long, long format is useful. Okay. All right. Um, let's do the process data of how are we doing. Oh, we have uh, 12 more minutes. So let's see how far we can go. Um, so course data, we don't have to, um, let's just view. So the course data, we have quite a bit. I think one of the things that's happening is to separate them out, this long uh, first column, it, it has a, quite a bit of information, the subject name and then section. Uh, I forget, there are three things going on with this hyphen. So one of the first things that's happening is to separate this first column by subject, semester, and section. And that's uh, separated by uh, hyphen in the value, right? As you can see there and there. And I want to take th that part, that part, the third part are separate variables. So that's what this um, separate function is doing. And if you see the course data, 
now um oh it might it might come towards the end so maybe it's better to see um course data i think it's oh, why is it coming oh it's coming yeah sorry it, it was coming here subject semester and section and then the original is kept uh, because uh, we are saying remove false. If you didn't, don't do that, then this the first one, the original one will drop, I think. All right, so let's, uh, so I'm glad we can do the join. So this is where we merge um, some of the, I mean, the three data frames, but to do that, um, just to do a cleaning so that it has the same key, same names for the key variables. So in the pre-survey, student ID and course ID has these names, but um, let's name it as student ID and course ID so it's more apparent and then straightforward. Um, so rename function does that. Um, the new one that you specify comes first and then put the old ones. And when you do that, now we have student ID and course ID rather than these uh, long names. Um, okay, so this is, um, oh, this is, oh, okay. Take a look what's going on with student ID. It has some weird uh, underscore going on. And what we care about is this middle five digits. So string subtract um, extract these uh, five digits. So this is the first couple of these are just a practice. Let's take a um, let's let's get let's start with the second digit. That's the first line. Um, let's get rid of um, the last three. I believe. Let's see if you do that. Yeah. I, no, let's give me that last three. And if you do the, you, you put both start and end, um, then you get the one that you like. Um, so now you did a little bit of a practice with one case, you can apply it through um, the whole thing, whole student ID. So instead of this particular case, now we are feeding um, the column name or the variable student ID, and we are overwriting it, as you can see, uh, by using mutate. So I'm running this. Um, and let's see. Oh, and then the second step is to uh, keep this, you know, currently it's a string variable character, but let's save it as, as numeric. Um, yeah, there's some warning message, but you can keep going. Uh, let's see how we're doing with time. Okay, let's go a little bit more. So from the course data, um, the same thing is happening. You know, we are renaming the IDs, the key. Um, and then here is the join uh, function. So we are joining, let's make the course data as the main and I'm adding stuff from the pre-survey and using these two IDs as um, key that appear in both data frames and it now has the same names. But you can have different names actually and then there's a way to specify how you know, student ID is called in one data frame and then what, how it's called in the second one. And if you look up left join function, um, it tells you how to do that or you can Google it. But this is when, uh, this is where we are creating new data, a new data frame called that. And then we just merged both of the, these two data frames. All right. Um, we're doing the same thing with the course minutes uh, data, right? And then, yeah, I'm just gonna run. This is just to merge, you know, clean the ID names, making integers and then joining, you know, now we are, uh, so this is another way of writing, right? So, you know, again, the assignment, I wanna keep this join 
uh, joined uh, data frames. So I start with that. Please keep it, these changes. I'm calling on that. So instead of having that here, like we did earlier, sorry, that two uh, data frames, you can say, you can take out the first data frame that you want to use as a base up above and then put the pipe sign to carry on and then specify the second data frame, which is the course minutes. Um, it does the same thing as earlier. It's a different way of writing the codes. Um, and here, uh, what's going to happen is that, um, maybe we, it's better to see that. But um, so we combine all of it. So we have questions and time spent information. But uh, currently, the same student uh, 60186 is repeated quite a bit. And that's because this um, course data data frame was long format and it has a lot of this grade book items, right? The first row is about points earned, second one work attempted, right? Um, and I think these are, um, some of these are the numbers associated with the, these items. But we don't really care about these um, many, many rows that come out of the grade book. We only care about um, each combination of student ID and course ID. So we want just one row for student ID and course ID combo. So this distinct function is doing just that. So yeah, so I'm going to make changes and I will keep it. So I will make the assignment sign and I'm calling upon. So first one is what's the data set. So I'm using that and just give me uh, these two um, distinct cases of these two variables, two, var two combos and um, make sure to have keep all so that um, you will keep all the columns intact. Um, yeah, so then we, we um, basically eliminated many, many rows uh, from the gate grade book. So we, for student 60186, you only see this first item from a great item, right? And then now you see second students. Um, and we're just changing the grade, final grade uh, variable name here was just a simpler name using rename. Okay, so we just did the <laughs> cleaning part. So how are we doing and do, you, do we wanna go ahead? Or should we stop here and then see um, process check? Um, do you have any questions or comments? That was great. I mean, I know it was a ton to cover and it, and it reminds me of the slide that you showed that data cleaning is a huge chunk of the work um, and how long it takes to, to actually go through and do it. Yeah. But um, what are people's experience of doing this? Is it pretty new to you or is this part of the thing that you do? I saw a few things that are way more efficient than the way I do it. So I, I can definitely um, clean up my code by, by incorporating some of these things. Okay, great. great. Yeah, I haven't used case when that much. I, I usually do mutate and if else, <laughs> that's uh, when I need to recode something. Um, but I, so I felt case when is something that I can learn and maybe use. I use the, uh, the joins and stuff like that quite often, mm -hmm. but sometimes it can get really confusing, especially if you're like going from one student and then like you bring in grades and then like multiply. So I kind of, before even joining, I kind of like have an idea of like, 
what do I expect? Do I expect the numbers to increase or do I expect them to decrease, to stay the same? Mm-hmm. It's like, I think that for me is important is to say like, what do I, what am I expecting from it? And if it doesn't do what I expect it to do, right. then there might be something wrong in the joint. And right. something else I noticed for a super long time, I couldn't join these tables because there was a space, an extra space in the SID, in a student ID. And for the longest time, I didn't know that. And mm-hmm. so I think like, again, I was just like, that's just a, a one-off thing, but that was really frustrating. And then one day I noticed, I was like, there's an extra space. Right. And then you just, you like string trim. And it's just like, I spent six months. I was like, I, did I break it or something? And I was like, no, there's an extra space. And it's just like, right. yeah. you come across those things where you're like, I'm going crazy. Yes. And it's just like, it was a simple thing. Yes, that's so true. So yes, I think that should be part of your data cleaning process to check for like extra space. And yeah, when you import data from CSV or Excel file, a lot of different things could happen. Yeah. Okay, so I, I think some people need to uh, jump off. So I will stop here, but um, please feel free to go analysis. And then I don't know, I'm happy to come along next week if we wanted to continue doing this, or it could be just, um, you know, on your own time and then continue conversations on Slack, whatever uh, you think best, uh, especially Ryan and I don't know, oh, uh, she already left maybe, but. Yeah, she can run. Um, uh, I was just looking at next week and it looks like Morgan uh, is going to be leading out next week. Um, and so I, I think for now, we'll just recommend people doing it on their own and, and using the Slack channel because um, this is great stuff just to get us started and to be thinking through the whole process with a simple linear model. Um, but I think I have, I have a feeling that all the all of these walkthroughs are going to be taking a full hour. Um, I may be wrong, but um, they're all just so diverse and, and different and, and big. So I, I think for now we may just recommend working together through Slack. So. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. So uh, reach out to me if you have any questions about the codes, and maybe Ryan, I, I might reach out to you how to do this merge thing on GitHub, I get confused. All right, so um, yeah, so have a good evening, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.